welcome to The Body Breakdown. Dave here, Tyler here. Today, we're wrapping up 2020. We're gonna have a little story time. We're gonna go over some stories of client results that we've had in the, this past year. Uh, it's been an up and down year, but that's what we're gonna look at is who were some positives that we had. So we got five great stories we're gonna go over today. So first off, we're gonna start with jumping right in. Tyler's gonna tell kind of client results, kind of where they started, kind of some issues they were having, and how we've helped them get over those issues and start living that pain-free life again. So Tyler, let's start with our first story. Uh, let's start with Richard. All right, so I usually work with everybody on their first day, so usually I do all of the initial evaluation. So it's kind of cool. I get to see everybody's, um, you know, their starting point and then where they get to kind of end at. Um, so that's always like a neat process. So, you know, for Richard, his biggest problem was um, he would he was trying to be active. Um, he's you know a previous athlete. He likes to run, um, and his big problem was is whenever you try to run, um, he said he could never feel like he really got to the point where he was like you know I got ha I got a good run in because his hip would start hurting. Yeah. So, he was trying to get to that cardiovascular side, and he was not being able to get that. It was more the muscles were giving out, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And that's where it's like he was starting to experience you know some clicking in his hip, um, some issues with the side side of his hip. Um, so whenever he initially came in, that was kind of his frustration is he's like, I really feel like I can't get to the activity or fitness level that I want to. Um, not necessarily because it's my heart and lungs can't do it or the, the he would go out there and try. It was his body was limiting yeah. him um, from the, you know, the overuse of certain muscle groups. Um, and then he was really tight in other ones. And this, a lot of it happened from his workout routine that he would do outside of running mm -hmm. involved a lot of the same muscle groups like your regular, you know, whenever it comes to guys, you know, squats, um, deadlifts, stuff along those lines. And what ended up happening is all of these other really little muscle groups, these stabilizers that are really holding everything structurally in place for you, got really weak. Um, and whenever he would run, those muscle groups technically couldn't keep up with his body. Um, those muscles would fatigue really fast and it would cause him a whole bunch of different mm -hmm. hip pain. So, and then the other muscle groups that he was overworking kept on getting tighter, kept on getting tighter, kept on getting tighter um, and consistently added to his pain. So whenever he came in here, his thought was, he was like, you know, we're going to see kind of how this goes, stuff along those lines. Um, but he ended up figuring out, I'm super immobile and I have certain areas that are super weak. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the little exercises that we do with these little resistance band, he was just blown away with, oh my gosh, these things are so hard. Um, and I'm over here doing really, you know, heavy squats and things like that. Um, and it actually got to a point he couldn't even do that anymore because yep. those were starting to bother him as well. Um, so, you know, fast forward, we worked on hip mobility. We worked on strengthening all of these little hip muscle groups. Um, and now he's able to run and finally is able to technically get back to the level of fitness that he has been wanting to get mm -hmm. back to. Um, and he's been, been dealing with this for about like seven years. He said it's been like, you know, he's turned 40 um, and his, he felt like ever since that he turned 40, his body was breaking down. So that mm -hmm. was kind of the explanation to him is you're, you know, based off your workout routine, based off of what you did every day, um, you kept on causing it to get the problem a little bit worse, a little yeah. bit worse a little bit worse until it's now built up to a point that he end up having pain. Um, and now you have to change your routine, change your exercises, change your stretching routine to get back onto track. Yeah, I think it's a good point. Uh, a lot of times we see people that they're like, they feel the signs a little bit, like that he kind of probably started feeling the tightness in places. And then it just gets a little worse and a little worse until it becomes that big thing. So I think that's a good example of how uh, being re real uh, keen in what your body feels like and you know, when you start feeling these immobilities or tightness is happening or you can't do these things, you need to take action quickly to fix these, not let it build up to it for seven years or for some people, 20 years when we see people, because uh, it's just going to take, it's going to be harder process to fix in the long yeah. scheme. Of and especially for Richard, it only took about, you know, once yeah. we got onto the right things, only about three months until he could get back to his normal workout yeah. routine. And the funny part with Richard was, is after we fixed that problem, he's like, hey, uh, also my shoulder has yeah. been bothering me quite a bit as well. So then he pulled that. And so for that, he was really having a hard time. Like any time that he would go out and play like catch with his son or something along those lines, his shoulder would kill him. Um, and he, it's once again, he was doing too much, um, you know, a lot of, you know, chest exercises, stuff like that. So the front of his shoulder got really tight. 
the back of the shoulder got really weak. So whenever you technically did those motions, those muscle groups back here couldn't technically hold his actual shoulder in place. So what ends up happening is he caused a whole bunch of inflammation to his shoulder. Yep. So that's something else that we worked on and we kind of got him back into doing the other exercises. Yep. We're correcting his movements, getting everything back into position. So now a lot of this stuff, now you can go run on his lunch break whenever he wants to and gets to do the things that he wants and can play catch with his kid at yep. home um, without any pain or any repercussions the yep. next day. Literally so. took the same concept that we were working on the hip, moved it into the shoulder, take the same principle and we were able to fix both things. For sure. Awesome. Let's move on to the next person. Let's stick go with Adam next. Okay. So Adam, um, he's he had sciatica really bad whenever he initially came in. And he said he's been dealing with it for about 10 years. Um, he's done everything from chiropractic care to physical therapy. I think he got a couple injections um, and saw um, a neurosurgeon about it. And it was kind of, you know, I don't really know where I need to go. Um, I'm going to try these three sessions. Everybody's always skeptical whenever they come in for their first time because they've kind of tried everything in the first place. Um, and, and in his case, he um, is a kind of a salesman. So he goes around and travels all around Southeast Missouri and is in the car a lot. Um, and one of the most uncomfortable positions to be in is in a seated position. So whenever you get out of his car, um, his leg would be, you know, almost, especially with sciatica, you're getting shooting pain down the leg. His pain, uh, the pain was so bad he could barely walk whenever he would get out of his truck. And then the other part is, is that his wife was starting to, you know, like, let's get active, let's go walking together, stuff along those lines. And he could maybe go, you know, 10 minutes before um, his really leg started to really, you know, flare up and irritate him where he couldn't go anymore. Mm -hmm. So that was really discouraging to him because he wanted to get more active but couldn't. Um, and, you know, for Adam, you know, he literally, the first day that he came in, he got relief that day. And it was stood up and he was like, whoa what did you just do? That is, that feels completely different. And the sciatica that I was walking in with is completely gone. What the heck did, what, what happened there? So then we got to explaining to him a lot of the things that he was doing in the past. Um, it wasn't necessarily like if we know anything about sciatica, um, it's like you have an impingement of that sciatic nerve going down your leg. And a lot of people always think it's an adjustment issue, but always what it can also be is there's a muscle that's really tight that's impinging over it that's causing the sciatica. So all we did is we loosened up a couple of those different muscle groups, massaged them out, um, and that day he felt better. And really, you know, Adam's been with us for, you know, um, you know, probably coming close to, you know, eight months to a year now. Mm -hmm. um, and he hasn't had any problems since. Yep. So now he can, and now he's walking with his wife. He's able to go through his whole work day without having any problems, stuff along those lines. And if he does, he can immediately get out of pain by doing a couple stretches, stuff along those lines. He knows exactly what to do yep. to kind of get out of the pain. Yeah, and even on him, his scenario is we went from he was in pain and got out of pain really quickly, but we started working on strengthening all the opposing areas. Uh, and that's where he's been in a maintenance phase of, you know, opposingly working those other areas and building a strength. So he's actually getting stronger and staying out of pain all at the same time. Because a lot of times we're, we'll stretch somebody out, but if you don't start working on create, uh, fixing these imbalances, that pain comes back. So that's kind of where he is. He, he understands the more I keep these exercises going, the more sh I stay consistent with my stretching, my pain stays away. Yeah, and I and think then, that's a key. And then one another that. one farm as well is they bought a uh, house to renovate. Um, it's kind of like a fixer upper house, you know, everybody trying to do the Chip and Joanna games today. <laughs> um, so his wife, you know, was kind of accounting for him to be able to do all these projects, but he was hurting so bad whenever you get home, he had no energy or time or over the weekends, he was like, you know, more or less recovering. So, you know, as of lately, he's been able to do some of those yeah. projects without having problems and stuff like that. So, you know, really, you know, what their initial plan was kind of changed due to the pain. So, you know, a lot of times, you know, you don't even realize on how, you know, simplistic the answer can be or how fast you can get out of pain. So that's why I always suggest to people like, just come in for three free days. It's free. Like, yeah, and if it doesn't work for you, you don't have to continue yeah. forward. So that's sure. always a, always a big one and a cool story for him. Let's go, uh, let's go over Gretchen. Tell me about hers. Okay, so Gretchen, you know, she's pretty recent. Um, she's been experiencing um, lower back pain and kind of like, kind of almost like an IT band issue, mm -hmm. um, some pain down the side of her leg um, for like the past two years. Um, she, you know, 
is heavily into CrossFit and loves that workout lifestyle, mm -hmm. which is totally perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, her biggest thing was it was really limiting on what she could do there. And then mm -hmm. the other aspect is is the workouts that she would do there would flare these things up, yeah. um, and then would cause her to have low back pain. The side of her leg would hurt, um, and you know, it would cause her tons of discomfort. So she just came in, you know, maybe a couple of weeks ago, and you know it's been two years since she's had really any relief and it gives her like she was even saying towards the beginning of the year lots of anxiety about it about mm -hmm. like what am I going to do I really don't want to have surgery I want to try to be able to fix this um and you know it gave her a lot of stress on on her side of what what am I going to what am I going to do if I have a surgery now um you know I'm not that old so I want to make sure that I don't have to continually like this thing keeps on happening again and again and within the first three days the pain was gone and she was like what just happened? Like, <laughs> what did you do? Um, and she's been through the ringer. She's had injections into her back, which helped for maybe a month and felt totally fine. And then it came right back. Yep. And then she was went to PT. It's helped for a little bit and little bit to none at all. Um, and then she's back in pain again. And then she's trying to like, some days are good. Some days are really bad. I'm having more, um, really bad days than good days. Um, and all we did is we worked on stretching her glutes, stretching her hamstring, stretching her calf and the pain down on the side of her leg was gone immediately. And then her back pain has progressively gotten better and better and better where she's almost going session to session without technically pain. Mm -hmm. So yep. Yeah, that's one of the first things we're trying to fix it, figure out with a new client is find that loop of a week. You know, how many, how often we have to do something to get that pain to continually subside because it'll be, yeah, we'll work on it and it'll feel better for a few days and then it starts coming back. But like that's that. And then as we work on it more consistently, that, that, that gets further and further and further and out. And that's kind of the, we got to her loop really quickly on the front end. So she was able to now feel good and then now we can work on progressing to make sure yep. that we work those opposing muscle groups just like we said so that we can now keep that gone forever yeah and, that's and, kinda... I, and i even think a, a a good one for her is that one of our clients referred her to us mm -hmm. and it's taken her almost a year and a half to be able to actually come in she's like yeah so-and-so has been telling me about this for you know a year and a yeah. half yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. i finally bit the bullet and like i I don't have any other options i'm just gonna go try it out just to see what the heck happens and do them a favor and anyways, because we had a referral contest going on mm -hmm. at the time. So um, she came in and she was like, best thing I ever did. I have no idea why I did not do this a year and a half ago. This would have saved me a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of energy, and you know, stressful nights having to stay up and think about this because you know, it's been really stressing her out of what is my next step? What am I going to do? Um, I want to be active. And then she also has two grandbabies. So she wants to be able to stay active with them and do stuff along, uh, do stuff with them. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it can be really stressful and, you know, but he puts you at ease whenever you come in yeah. and we can, you know, find actually correlations to your problem and show you actually how we can fix it and stuff like that. So if you're out of hope, give us a try. Yep. All right. So move on to Lisa next. Tell me about Lisa. All right. So here's another good one. <laughs> yeah. A lot of good stories. All right. So Lisa, once again, pretty new person, but, um, she came in having lots of lower back pain. Um, she has had technically problems with her SI joint going in and out of place for probably the last 10 years. And she's once again has done all physical therapy, chiropractic care, everything that you could possibly, you know, try to be able to technically get um, that to heal. And really your SI joint is in your back back here. So if you're having lower back pain on one side or so it, that's probably, it could be a possibility yeah. of what's going on. Um, so that, with her, was, that was her specific, that was her specific yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So lower back pain could be a whole bunch yeah, of different yeah, yeah. things, but that was her specific SI kept on sliding in and out. In and out of place. Yep. Yeah, okay. um, so she went to a neurosurgeon and they were waiting for an approval of a um, SI joint fusion where they technically take a pen and then lock those two bones together um, to try to get it to hold in place. Um, and she really, like I said, hasn't had much stability over the last period of time. And this yep. is where she's said that, you know, it's really affected because she has grandkids affected her ability to be able to like getting up and down from the floor was almost impossible. Like she can't do that at all. Bending down to pick something up. She would have to try to find different ways to get things off of the ground. Um, sitting for long periods of time was an issue. Um, you know, and she's like, uh, her husband has wanted to travel a lot and they haven't because she said if she's, you know, walking or standing for long periods of time or in an airplane, you know, like she can't really take it cause her back starts to kill her so bad. Um, so that's where, you know, 
she was like, I'm out of options. I need to figure out what the heck I can do about this. And she was, whenever she came in, she was waiting for the approval of the surgery to see if it was going to get approved by the insurance or not. And thankfully it did not. <laughs> and she gave us the time and it's only been about a month and we've been able to get it to technically stabilize after the first week. Um, and it hasn't popped out of place since. How long uh, was she going with it? Not staying stable? 10 years. So she had an in and out for 10 straight yep. years, mm -hmm. not having longer. What's the longest amount of time that she would, it would stay stable? So she had a spurt where she went to PT and it, st it stayed for about three, for physical therapy. It stayed for about three weeks. Mm -hmm. And then she, and this is where her problem was, is that she went for three weeks. She started doing these exercises and stretches, but then she increased her activity level because she thought it was fixed. But in reality, if you increase your activity level, you have to increase the uh, ability of those stretches and also the exercises that you're doing. You have to get harder to be able to match that stability level. Mm -hmm. She didn't, so then the instability came back and then she restarted yeah. that process. So on, three, a day, three, on a daily basis, I guess I'm getting at, what was her, like, how long she hold? Almost every day. She would yeah, have to get, she would have to get a, her husband would help adjust her leg every single day. Yeah, yeah, so she like would, she would in and out every single day. And then the longest she's ever had in 10 years of three week and after, so she's been here for four weeks. So she's been, she's probably been five. here about five weeks. Okay, okay. So, and she's after the first week is stabilized the entire time and it's continually getting better and better and better. Um, so now that was kind of, you know, big thing with her is, you know, she was getting ready for a surgery, um, which she mm -hmm. really did not want to do. Um, and she's like, I finally feel like I'm getting my normal, she can bend down and pick stuff up again. She can be able to get up and down from the floor. Mm -hmm. She's able to do exercises she hasn't been able to do in probably months, years. Um, and she you know, doesn't have to deal with the day-to-day -day back pain. She doesn't have to get adjusted, stuff mm -hmm. along those lines. She can finally get back to you know, her normal life without having to you know, worry about having consistent pain and uncomfortabilities, things like that. Yeah. And you know, whenever you have grandkids, your grandkids will want you to be active with them. So if you can't get down to the floor or pick them up, stuff along those lines, you know, it really limits you on you know, how much you can enjoy with them. So that was kind of her big thing and especially for her husband too she's like i feel like i'm just taken away from him as well is because we could be traveling and experiencing the world together and you know and we you know we can and are able to um uh but from you know being able to go travel stuff yeah. like that but her body's just not allowing her to yeah. so that was um kind of a big one to hear she's like i'm ready to get going and try to start traveling a little bit again. yeah cool so. cool all right, let's uh, wrap it up with uh, Jessica. Tell me about Jessica's. So whenever Jessica came in, um, she was literally almost like leaned over like this yeah. <laughs> um, and almost forward whenever she first came in. And she was in excruciating pain. Um, and it's been, it was, it's been going on for a good while ever since she had kids. So after kids, her abdomen, you know, like, you know, after you have a kid or whenever you're pregnant, your abdominals get stretched to no end. Um, so your body finds new ways to work more or less. Mm -hmm. And then in her case, it got so bad where, you know, she was having a hard time being able to just even like, you know, just to be able to sit up, this was a task to try to be able mm -hmm. to like, to get up out of a chair, stuff along those lines. Um, you know, she was having trouble at sleeping at night. Um, you know, she has two little kids, so she, getting up and down from the floor was next to impossible. Um, holding her kids was next to impossible because it would hurt her back so bad. Um, and then also her job was once again, uh, made her, she had to, she has to drive all over Southeast Missouri, um, to go, you know, to go to different houses and stuff like that since she was a speech pathologist. Um, and you know, that's going to require yeah, you to get down CD, sitting, sitting first, yeah. and then getting down and, and trying to be able to get to the kids level stuff along those lines. So a lot of the activities they do, cause you know, most kids don't have an attention span worth 20 seconds. So mm -hmm. you have to get down with them to try to be able to, you know, grab their attention, be able to work with them. Um, so it's starting to really limit everything that she could do. And in about, you know, not even a couple weeks, we started getting the flexibility, flexibility back and then starting to be able to give her things that she can stretch yep. to start to loosen up all of these muscle groups. And really what happened after pregnancy is the muscle groups, what would the use or what muscles you would usually use the abdominals for. She was trying to find different things to use so that, you know, you not technically working on those muscle groups or knowing what to do after that process started to give her a whole bunch of low back pain because she started utilizing a lot of the muscle groups on the lower back and started to use her body incorrectly. Yeah. Um, you know, and now she like, she, Jessica's been with us for over a year now. Um, and you know, she's just like, my goal is to be able to maintain, make sure this never comes back yeah. again yeah. for one. Um, and two, she's like, I want to make sure that, you know, I can be able to do all of the things that I want with my children and not 
to allow it to limit, you know, my lifestyle mm -hmm. from a working standpoint because, you know, I have to technically be pretty active with these kids. I want to make sure I'm capable of doing that so yeah. I don't lock up or anything along those yeah, lines. Yeah, I mean, even just her, like, she's able to do any movement that we need to do in an exercise or a workout now. Her mobility is greatly improved, and she pain's not even a thought anymore. I mean, I was just talking to her the other day, and that's like, she doesn't even have to think about that anymore. It's always, it's never on the back of her mind at all. So look, she's able to be way active, and pain's not even a thought process. Yeah, and that's even the crazier part. She's in her 30s. Like, most, most people are thinking, oh, a lot of this doesn't hit me until I'm... Um, older stuff along those lines but you know in reality it can hit you whenever you're younger develop depending on you yeah. know the severity of your issues 100%. and problems so it can happen really young yeah. at the same time. we even have kids in high school that have this, these issues high schools teenagers all that like this is happening at all ages it's just depending on where you're at in that process and you know how severe it could be for you yep for yep. sure uh, but yeah, so that's some, uh, some of the stories that we've had from 2020. Uh, and we just wanted to, you know, make sure you understand kind of, kind of where the, the type of people we help, uh, we help these type of people every single day. So if you want to, if you've been experiencing any pain, you want us to come check out, uh, what your pain is and why your what's causing your pain, come in for our three free days. It's absolutely free. Uh, let us prove to you that we can fix your problem. So you will definitely experience pain relief in those three days. Uh, some people, uh, the pain's gone there. Some other people we have, we're setting up, we're showing relief and we're setting up the plan and showing you how we're going to do it. So it's kind of both uh, scenarios that happen during those three days. You get to work with Tyler. Tyler does those three days. Uh, you want to talk about that at all in a bit? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, my biggest, thing, just come give us a chance. Yep. Like just give us an opportunity to try to show you exactly what we can help. Every single person that comes in has the exact same things that they say is, you know, my problem's really specific. I don't know if you can help me. I've had this diagnosis. Anybody that's had a diagnosis, we fix nine out of 10 people. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, the one scenario that you maybe have broken your back or something along those lines. Like if you fractured something, we probably can't do anything mm -hmm. with that. You obviously need to go get that fixed. But in the case that, you know, you have something that's a chronic overuse injury, that's what we fix every single day. But if you fractured your back and it's been healed and now there's muscles imbalances there that need to be fixed and you're having back pain to that, we 100% can help that. So yep. like that's only that component, but just to kind of go on that. So like that's some things that we see all the time. People have that, but they don't recover it and don't fix those problems long term. That becomes a problem. It's those problems that we'd fix is those chronic problems that those muscles have tightened up because of an injury. And that's a lot of the things that we have sometimes. So yeah. all I say is don't regret not coming in yeah. is my biggest thing. Every, every person that always comes in, I wish I would have done this 10 years yeah. ago. I wish I would have done this two years ago. The problem that's kicked in, you just don't realize on how much it is actually a muscular issue. And that's exactly what we fix is we fix the muscles in your body um, and help your body start to work better so you don't have these pains, aches, injuries, things like that. And that's a wrap. Thanks for listening to The Body Breakdown. I hope you have a great New Year's and a happy pain-free 2021. So like, subscribe, share, uh, comment any pains that you have, and we will see you next time.